Before they take to the road, Haitians have a little saying. Courage. Courage, that is, to get into the ancient minibuses or converted pickups. Their worn-out suspensions mean the conditions on the roads are fully felt by the passengers. For longer journeys, they are allegedly luxury buses. Uh, don't forget to fix the radiator so the engine gets more ventilation. And after, uh, grease the wheels and make sure the nuts are tightened. Okay? Okay. Brunel barks out his orders in Creole, a mix of African dialects and French, inherited after two centuries of colonization. The country has virtually no public transport service. So most are private, and even they function with minimum resources. This company buys old American school buses and transforms them. Oh, it's a luxury service. We want our passengers to travel in comfort. It's a bus, not a truck. It's why we don't carry coal or goats and other animals. We only take luggage. Because, you know, goats pee everywhere, even all over the passengers, and we can't have that happening. Most of the buses have long since clocked over a million kilometers. Brunel, though, aims to get another million or so out of them. They are due to depart at dawn the next day. Haiti used to be known as the Pearl of the Caribbean. But dictatorships, hurricanes and earthquakes, in particular the one in 2010, in which over one million people lost their homes, have earned it another name, Haiti the Damned. The nation is still struggling to recover. Its economy is virtually at a standstill. Of the 4,000 kilometers of roads in Haiti, 90% are in very poor condition. My family always worries when I travel through the mountains. Oh my God, I feel so sick and I'm tired. Those with little means travel on the dump bed. Oh, it's too hot, I'll faint. Haitians are born fighters. In 1804, their country was the first to throw off the shackles of slavery. Sometimes gold is the incentive, whether it's yellow or white. But transport remains a problem. Well, a lot of drivers won't take my salt. They say it's too heavy and will ruin the engine. Along with its fighting spirit, Haiti also depends on its people's remarkable love of life and its voodoo gods to get back on its feet. Given the conditions on the road, it's probably best to be seated. Before departure, it's a free-for-all. The unlucky ones will spend close to eight hours standing, assuming all goes well. Brunel, the chief mechanic, is the bus's guardian angel. In 
Haiti, the most vital instrument on board is the horn. There are no road signs or directions on the roads and the horn is the only way to avoid accidents on a road that once you head out into the countryside, rapidly deteriorates. The first 150 kilometers, as far as Gonaives, are well asphalted. The last 80 are a mixture of dirt, pebbles and sand. No, the road is really no good, but uh, we'll try and avoid accidents and, and make it on time. The thing is not to have any breakdowns. Clonel has been using this attractive yet occasionally deadly road for four years. This is a hard part. I've already got some problems. Each time the truck risks breaking down. And once again, the road wins. Oh, what's happening? Why are you stopping? The old engine has lost power and Clonel has stalled. Close the door, keep everyone inside. You need to know the engine very well to get it running again. Put a stone under this wheel. Okay, go ahead, try and start. Okay. There is no railway to the north of the island, and bus fares have been going up for years. Fifteen euros. The trip costs fifteen euros. Yes, it's expensive. Plus, there's nothing to eat or drink. Well, I don't have a choice. It's daylight robbery. You could take the plane, but that'll cost you 90 euros, and that's a rip-off too. Fifteen euros each way, an average weekly salary in Haiti. And the journey's uncomfortable, it's really bumpy, it's too hot, it's horrible. Riding on the roof costs half as much, but is half as comfortable. Not that it's particularly restful down below. By the time you arrive, some part of your body is always aching. You're tired and it takes two or three days to recover. It's because of the poor roads. The shaking doesn't just rattle the humans, it also does the engine little good. Look, there's a broken down truck. It's usually the engine that has problems, but the tires often burst as well. Are there any garages on the way? No, they're a long way away. Yeah, that one stopped as well. And another one. 
It's a motorcycle taxi, one of the cheapest ways of getting around. But with three people on top of two wheels, the tires don't hold up well on these kind of roads. How long have you been pumping for? Uh, about 20 minutes. I ran over a stone and got a flat. There, that should do it. In Haiti, to get by is to survive. In this makeshift garage run by an orphan of the 2010 earthquake, the youngster has his own ingenious system to fix inner tubes. I scratch the rubber. You scratch it. I scratch it to give it a better grip when I glue another piece onto it to block the hole. It's for my bicycle. I got a flat tire. I began seven years ago and I've been doing it ever since. The boy's talent lies in how he repairs the tires. Glue can be too expensive or of poor quality, so he's made his own machine as a substitute. The heat makes the pieces of rubber fuse together. Why don't you just use glue? We have some, but it's not much use. If you use glue, the owner will soon be back with the same problem. Who thought up this method? I did. I used my brains and then I gave everyone the idea. The money we make is for uniforms and supplies for school. Four in ten children in the country live in abject poverty. Hunger forces many to take risks. They run and try and grab the truck, so I, I slow down to avoid accidents. I tell them not to reach out, that it's dangerous. Yeah, sometimes the kids get run over. There are not many jobs for their parents, just finding something to eat is a challenge. The children are forced to beg to the trucks that pass by. Please give me something, they say. They have parents, but very few have jobs. There's no water, no culture, nothing. They're forced to beg. They have to. Three quarters of Haitians have to live on the equivalent of just two euros a day. On an island where 200 years ago high principles brought an end to slavery, today's situation forces people to work their entire lives. It's wood. I make charcoal from it. The wood is cut up and it's piled up and then covered with some earth. And then we put straw on top and set fire to it. The charcoal is sold in Port-au-Prince or in St. Mark. I sell it for about 10 euros. I think soon there won't be enough trees left. But I don't know what else I would do. Joseph is 65 years old and for 40 years has been chopping wood like most of the population of Haiti. Charcoal is the only source of fuel for cooking. Without any other source of power, some 98% of Haiti's forests have disappeared. Bye. 
I'm disappointed. There's not much charcoal this time. I'll have to sell it for just five euros. Okay, let's go. Twenty kilos of charcoal that after five kilometers on foot, under a boiling sun, will soon seem three times as heavy for the elderly man. Like most of the locals here, Joseph will sell the charcoal to a wholesaler who visits the village twice a week. Wedge the bags in properly so they don't shake about on the journey. Makeli, the coal merchant, cannot afford his own truck, so he rents one and needs to make a profit. He needs to squash them down so we can put on uh, as many as we can. It's quite normal to do this. It also means the truck will be more stable. That's why I ask him to jump on them, to pack them down, see? I can get 300 bags on, but I think I'll have just 250. There just isn't enough of the good quality stuff. In addition to the charcoal, we sometimes take food and passengers. When the buses are full, it's the only way to get about. So we're the only alternative for many people. Ninety percent of the island is Christian. But time hasn't erased the ancient gods. Before each journey, I call on the voodoo spirits for the road. It's because whatever you need to do, you need to do it in the light, not in the dark. I'm a mystic, and I need God to be with me on the journey. That way, everything will go well. On his altar, a cocktail of Catholicism and the voodoo beliefs that arrived with the African slaves, a mixture of faith and magic. I perfume you, the spirits. Travel with me on my journey. If I return, I'll cover you with more nice smells. And here is something to drink as well. What's in it? It's cherry, pineapple, cinnamon and rum. The table is for good, not for evil. Michele takes four passengers as well as the charcoal. Go at the back, on top of the charcoal. I'll, I'll go in front. Climb on. Their destination is Gonaives. 80 kilometers of poor roads lie ahead. It can sometimes take two days. Look, there's an animal on the road. It's dangerous. Like when the animal's owner isn't there to, to keep it off the roads. Then the driver has 
little chance of uh, avoiding it. It's dangerous. Go on, go. Look, its owner isn't here. You have to slow down. And uh, if the brakes aren't good, you, you can't stop. So an accident is inevitable. The dangers seem to increase with each passing kilometer. Earth and sand finally give way to a stony track filled with sharp rocks. Because of the rocks, I try and stick to this side of the trail. And the stones also get stuck in the wheels. The rocks could cost Michele the equivalent of four months' salary. A new tyre costs about 600 euros, and given the state of the roads, any poor driving and bang, the tyre might burst and your money's gone. At the other end of the track, the bus passengers and Brunel, the mechanic, know all about it. You have to advance. Go forward. Forward. Get the spare wheel down. That'll do it. We're lifting the truck, you see. Brunel uses a normal car jack, as the one that came with the truck vanished a long time ago. Will it withstand the weight, though? Oh, it's physical work. Spare tire is up on the roof. We'll put the new one on after we remove the flat. Despite all the bumps, the heat and the endless stops, no one is complaining. Although there's some resentment brewing amongst the passengers. I'm a saleswoman. I make this trip often. There and back. I do this four or five times a month. Once it took two days to get there. Now, how can we work in such conditions? I'm 36, and I've been traveling this road for 10 years, and it's always been bad. Okay, we can go now. They left Port-au-Prince five hours ago, and the trip is far from over. Along the track, traffic is moving at a snail's pace. I'm always in first or second gear. At least it stops you speeding. You can't drive normally. At this rate, I feel everyone's asleep. You can't hurry on this road. Haiti means the lands of high mountains even if the highest is just 2,600 meters. The ravines, however, are deep enough to swallow any vehicle and its driver. There's a curve called the corn bend. There was this fellow who was driving along this road for the first time, and he was transporting corn. He was meant to take it to Bombadopolis, and he'd taken his son with him to show him the town. 
On the curve, there was this accident and his child was killed. That's why it's known as the corn bend. And there's still many trucks that have accidents here. This is the corn bend. It's a hairpin turn. Coming out of the corn bend is something Michele had been afraid of. We're loaded up and we're going downhill, so we can't go backwards. He can. He has to let us through. The passengers are far more concerned about the heat than the ravines. With temperatures of 45 degrees centigrade, they are slowly being roasted. Oh, I'm hot. I'll, I'll faint and then just rot away in the sun. It's the only way I can make this trip, though. Well, why don't you take the bus? Well, I don't have enough money to do that. Well, what do you pay for this? Eight euros? The dreadful roads not only tire the passengers, but also paralyze the nation economically. In the salt marshes, the women faced yet more hardships. Harvesting salt brings in little money. The work is so exhausting that it's mainly the men who carry it out. And inexplicably, the truck drivers refused to go to them. There are a lot of drivers who won't take my salt. It's heavy and they're afraid it might damage their vehicles. And then there are no real roads in this region, which makes it even harder to sell our salt. The only way they can trade their produce is to take it to town using pack animals. It's a two-day forced march. These women earn just enough to feed their families. One ton of salt brings in barely 24 euros. From their marsh, they can see the buses and trucks passing in the distance, almost taunting them. Mountains, Michele and his charcoal truck cross paths with Brunel and his 60 passengers. Up in the mountains, it's scary. There are ravines on both sides, left and right. Obviously, it's scary. My family always worries about me when I'm going through the mountains. Oh, the roads are bad. So I think about accidents and then not arriving on time.
The condition of the roads is no coincidence. Haiti easily tops the list of the most corrupt countries in the Americas. My God, it hurts. I'm exhausted. Oh, it's awful. The road is no good here. The politicians just pull their usual scams. They take money for themselves and their families, but do nothing for us. The ancient suspension has got the better of the passengers and their luggage. Driver, stop! Stop! Something's happening! What's happening up there? Oh no, look, something's fallen. Sir, be careful with the luggage. Be careful. Yeah, look, something's fallen off. Brunel is cross with the passengers on top. They're only paying half fare. And they could at least be more careful. It doesn't happen often. We can soon start up again. I think it's the vibrations that caused it. Barely one hour later, and it's the engine's turn to show signs of fatigue. It's overheating, and inside, the temperature begins to rise too. Without air conditioning, crammed in together, the heat soon reaches 40 degrees. A final bump, and the tension erupts. Those in the back take it out on Brunel and his ancient bus. Why are you throwing a bottle of water like that? You're rude. I don't know who threw that bottle, but it's a really bad thing to do. You should go back to school. I'm shocked. You're a disgrace. You can't throw things in a truck full of people. Whoever did that is a real hooligan. And I won't have it. I won't have it. Driver, come on, let's go again. To cool things down, Brunel decides to pull up at one of the rare service stops on the journey. Who would like something to eat? 20 centimes, only 20 centimes. We always try and sell something every time the bus stops. Now, what are you selling there? Fried fish and bananas. There's just about time to swallow a few mouthfuls. And Brunel calls everyone back on board. And once again, peace has returned. Luckily, we're still all in one piece, thank God. In fact, the journey was completed in just 12 hours. Quite an achievement by Brunel and his driver. (laughs) 
After 48 hours, they will head back to Port-au-Prince. The beach at Mole St. Nicholas is where Christopher Columbus and the Spanish first landed in 1492. Haiti was soon settled and stripped of its natural resources. In the northwest of the island are the Lacway gold mines. Lacway may look like an ordinary village. Below ground, it is riddled with holes and tunnels. Go on, faster, come on. At all times of the day, the search is on for gold. 20 meters down on homemade ladders. Flexibility is a plus, as most of the galleries are barely one meter high. You have to get down on all fours to get through these. It's very narrow. Oh, this is good. I'm pleased. Oh, this looks promising. G give me a bag. Every swing of the pickaxe could bring riches, but also death. The galleries are not shored up and could collapse at any moment. Underground, it's 40 degrees, and the miners have to come up for air at least every two hours. Here's the earth. That's where the gold is. Jean-Francois is the owner of this mine. Work starts at 5 a.m. and we finish at about 8 p.m. or 9 or even 10 at night. Even midnight sometimes. No, we're not tired. When we're hungry, we come up to eat and then we go back down. What does gold mean to you? It means we can pay for the school, for the house, buy food, everything we need really. Jean-Francois pays his miners by the bag, and depending on how hard they've worked. Elliot, uh, six bags for you, right? Three for you and three for you as well. Everyone's here as a miner. You dig, you can easily fill up at least one bag. Uh, but then if there's no gold, you've wasted the whole day. You've worked for nothing. But you've got to be really unlucky to find nothing at all. As in the salt marshes, the most thankless tasks are left to the women, who work just as much as the men. Chema arrives with what her husband has excavated. Oh, my back! <laughs> Bending over and getting up again has ruined my back. Making enough to live on is hard. There's a lot of poverty here for us and our children. You see, we sift it once and then do it again, just to make sure. And we keep looking and looking.
later in the day, the youngsters come to lend a hand. How old are you? Me? I'm 17. And you? How old are you? I'm 10. Me, I'm 14. You do this every day? When there's no school, we come here to work. It's not that we like what we're doing, but there isn't much choice. Their dream is to find a nugget. But mostly, what they find is this. It's gold. Gold? Look! It's rarely more than just a flake or two. It's not easy to find these, it's difficult. How, but how does it feel to have found some gold? Well, I feel happy when it happens. Jema is in a good mood for once, as she's off to sell her gold. Once a week, a merchant buys the gold the miners have found. Jema hopes to get a good price and buy some animals at the market. Hello, how are you? Good, yeah, I'm new. I've got some gold for you. Can you tell me how much it's worth? Four days hard work in this tissue. Well, the problem is it's uh, still a bit wet. You should let it dry first. And there's quite a lot of dust. And all the impurities uh, have to be removed first. 0 0.2 grams. It's not worth much. Well, I can buy it if you want. How much? Three euros. No, that's not enough. Oh, you're not happy, eh? Well, we'll keep at it, we'll keep digging, so we'll have a lot to sell later. 0 0.2 grams of gold every four days is about average for Jema, and at that rate, it will take her 14 years to find a kilo of gold. Uh, it's not very clean, the water. Even the mine owners like Jean-Francois earn barely enough to get by. The water hole is the communal bath. Everyone washes here. We come here even if we finish at midnight. One in the morning, two even. Jean-Francois's only luxury is the kitchen. Dinner is almost ready. Even if it's been hastily thrown together with odds and ends, it's still an extra room. His wife cooks the same meal every day. Split pea soup and rice. I'm afraid for him sometimes down in the mine, but I'm resigned. It's the way he has to make his living. I would like him to do something else. I've never found any other work. If there was easier work, I'd do it. Jean-Francois has seven children and hopes at least one will not be doomed to work down the mines. The rainy season has come late this year. But for weeks, the weather has never been as threatening. Michaeli and his charcoal have been on the road for over six hours. There's another 20 kilometers to go, and it's probably the hardest stretch. Hey, 
When it rains, it becomes very difficult to drive on these dirt tracks. The trucks can easily slide or even get stuck in the mud. Up on the roof, the passengers are trying to keep dry under an old tarpaulin full of holes. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, we can put up with this. Because we're brave. How long has it been since it rained? Oof, long time. For how long? Nine months? Yes, nine months. Well, look, you know, whether you're underneath a tarpaulin or not, we just, we all get soaked just the same. In all of the Americas, Haiti is one of the islands most affected by natural catastrophes. Each year, about 12 tropical storms leave a trail of destruction. And then there are the hurricanes and cyclones. Now look, there are some cars that are stopped up in front. The cars can't get through, they're not powerful enough. When it rains like this, the floods can sweep people away. And motorcycles and even small cars. Go on, go ahead. Michele's voodoo prayers seem to have worked. And he arrives in Gonaives without further trouble. We left at midday, and we arrived at 7 p.m., so it took seven hours. Uh, I'm tired, of course. But the good Lord kept me safe and sound, so I'm happy. Even if the locals call it Haiti the Damned, they retain their incredible will to live.